Let's say you just created the best sculpture of your life. Of course, you can just take the screenshot of ZBrush document and be done with it, but I believe that your model deserves better. I tend to render my digital sculptures outside of ZBrush, and I do it in a variety of different softwares. Over here, there is an older video where I go over the process of doing it within Maya and using Redshift. It's still a good video to watch if you're a beginner and you want to get an overview of the concepts about rendering. I go quite in-depth in that video, it may be a little bit slow, but it still has plenty of good information. These days I usually render my sculptures out in Houdini and render with Redshift there rather than Maya. The reason for this switch is that Houdini has a more procedural approach and it's easy to set up a scene once and then you can just replace your model with different sculpts and the whole scene is already set up and it's just really quick. So I'm going to show you my current pipeline and if this video gets 3 likes then I'll show you how to set up the rendering for your models in Blender and Cycles. First, let's get our model out of ZBrush. I prefer to do it the old-fashioned way, through exporting the FBX file. I can then import the same FBX into any software that I want. Now that we're inside of Houdini, let's drop a file node to import our FBX. Dive into the network, navigate to the exported file. It's now in the scene, but it's a bit big. Houdini's units of measurement are meters, so currently this model is gigantic. Let's scale it down to something more reasonable. I'm not going for physically accurate here, just something that would be easier to work with. Using the copy and transform node, I can quickly create and position duplicates of a model with a set translation and rotation offsets. Next I'll set up an infinity call for the backdrop. It's similar to what would be used in a real world studio photography. It will provide bounces for the light and some background environment so our models aren't floating in space. A quick play with the parameters for better positioning and alignment of the models. Now we need to add a camera to render from. Log the viewport to the camera and position the shot how you want it. Let's try to render what we have set up so far. As you can see it's rather dark. Let's rectify that by adding some lights. I like to start with a dome light with a connected HDRI texture. It's a quick way to start getting good results with very little effort. The HDRI that I'm using here is free one from Polyhaven website, linked in the description. Play a bit with the parameters to get the result that you like. This isn't anything final, so don't be too precious. At this stage we just want to see what we're doing. I like leaving the IPR render going to see the changes I make in the real time. Let's create some simple materials. I like keeping them inside the ShopNet node. This way, I have everything I need under the OBJ tab. Let's make one material network for sculpture, one for the background. We can assign these materials to the geometry in the scene by adding a material node at the end of the relevant node network. Within the attributes of that node, we can navigate to and select our freshly created materials. Let's check if it works by changing the color. If you see that it doesn't, try restarting your IPR rendering. Now that it works, let's tweak the parameters a bit. I want the background to be quite dark. Let's make the sculptures lighter so they stand out a bit more. I'll also make them a bit more matte by increasing the roughness. Same for the background. A good trick to accentuate the details on your sculpture is through using Redshift's curvature node. Let's add it and plug it in through a ramp for a little more control. Let's change it to a concave so it will affect the concave areas acting like a dirt that accumulates in the crevices. Now let's tweak the ramp values. We can now play with the radius to bring out some of the fine detail of our sculpture. We don't want to overdo it, it needs to be subtle. We can play with the ramp color values to make the material resemble a brown clay. Keep tweaking the parameters of ramp and curvature nodes until you're happy with the result. 
Remember, this is art, not science. Just have fun with it. We can store a snapshot of our IPR render in the Redshift's render view so that we can use it for comparison of our progress. As a final step, let's play with the specular highlights. Nice specular reflection can add a lot of interest and volume to the object. That's why bodybuilders get covered in oil for photo shoots. I like to keep the base roughness quite at a high value, something like 0.5. That will give us a nice wide highlight. I then add a secondary highlight by using the coating tab to achieve a more focused sharper highlight, giving it a wet clay look and adding a little bit of extra volume. Now that the base materials are done, it's time to look at replacing our placeholder lighting with something a bit more directed and dramatic. The main point of lighting is to accentuate shapes and volumes. You may have heard the expression sculpting with light. This is precisely what we're going to do. Let's deactivate our dome light. Now let's add a rectangular area light. This will be our overhead light. It will do a lot of heavy lifting when it comes to bringing our shapes out. It is a type of light that is often used in product visualization for dramatic flare. See how with this light alone we're already getting quite a cool vibe. But we want to show off a bit more of our sculpting detail, so let's add some extra light by duplicating our top light, placing it to the right of our subjects and then rotating it toward them. We now get some nice edge lighting coming from the right. Let's tone it down a notch. Let's balance the left side of our image by duplicating this light and repositioning it there. We can now balance all three lights by playing with their intensities and temperatures. Higher values of temperature will shift the color of light towards the blue spectrum, lower towards yellow or orange. I tend to go for overall colder looks with some warm highlights. Finally, let's add the rim lighting just to give our models a bit more punch on the silhouette. It's doing its job, but it's rather strong now, so let's dial it right down. Let's compare it with our old placeholder lighting. See what a difference a simple studio light setup can give. From now on, it's a matter of balancing the lights until you're happy with how it all looks. Redshift Render View Buffer also gives some neat post-render effects. It's a great way to fine-tune your render without ever leaving the scene. If you ever did any photography, you'll find a lot of familiar terms under the Optical tab. Let's tweak some of these values to make the render look even better. I like to turn on Tone Mapping. Here I allow for a bit of brighter highlights. I then fine-tune the contrast by playing with Blacks and Blacks threshold values. I then tweak Saturation, Vignetting and Exposure. Just experiment and have fun until you find the look that you like. Our base render is looking pretty good, but we can push it an extra mile by refining our materials. Until now we used procedural approaches, now let's add some photo textures to add extra depth and realism to our clay material. I'm using a clay texture pack that I bought a little while back, I will leave the link to it in the description. Let's load in one of the normal map tiles from the pack. To see its effect, let's plug it in directly into the surface pin. You can see that right now we're just getting a uniform color over our entire model. This is because our model has no UVs. We could of course look at retopologizing the model, unwrapping the UVs and reprojecting the detail. This would be the proper workflow, but as we're only after some quick still renders, let's use a quick workaround instead. Redshift comes with a triplanar node that allows to project the texture onto the mesh without any need for UVs. Let's edit and play with the scale until it starts to look good. Now let's plug our material back in and duplicate our triplanar setup. We will use that for the roughness map to match the scale of the normal map. Let's plug in the roughness map into the corresponding slot on the material and let's add bump node to our normal map. Make sure to change it to tangent space normal. Now let's plug it into the Redshift Material Bump Node slot. You may need to restart the IPR render again to see the effect take place. 
We have something happening, but it looks wrong. Make sure to switch the color space for the normal map from sRGB to RAW, that should fix it. It's also a bit too strong at the moment, we want a subtle effect, so let's tweak the height of the scale. I also feel the coating specular is too uniform at the moment, so let's tweak that by adding some RS noise. I'll temporarily plug it into the surface pin to see the noise and fine-tune it. Find a noise that you like from the list of noises and play with the parameters. You just want something that will break up the highlights, so don't overthink it, a subtle fine noise will look good. Let's plug it into the relevant slot on the material and render again. Now let's render the full image, we can compare it with what we had before. The changes are rather subtle, but I think they add a bit of realism and life to the render. Now that we've tweaked our materials, I want to make the rim light a little bit stronger. And now that I'm happy with that, let's do a full bucket render. There we go, looks good. Of course, feel free to experiment and fine-tune the lights and materials to your liking, but this here should give you a solid base for your rendering adventures. Thanks for watching!